Hello everyone and welcome to Signals, Systems and Signal Processing with Wolfram U. This lesson will be on signal classification. We will classify signals based on their properties into several categories. Continuity, duration of the signal, symmetry, periodicity of the signal, and the strength of the signal. One of the main distinctions used throughout this course is continuous time versus discrete time. The term continuous and discrete refers to the independent variable of the signal, usually denotes time or position. A continuous time function refers to a function that is defined at every point in its domain. Here are a few examples of continuous time signals. A function could also be piecewise continuous time. That means that it is continuous in some finite number of its subintervals. A discrete time signal, on the other hand, is defined only at a finite or infinite set of distinct points in its domain. These points are usually evenly spaced over the domain. For convenience, we use an interval of size one between the points. So this way, the signal is defined for integers only. In the same way, we could have piecewise discrete time signals. The next category for classifying signals is based on their duration. A signal could be of infinite length. Here are some examples. Or it could have finite duration, as shown here. Signals can be categorized as either symmetric or asymmetric. Symmetric signals can be either even or odd. A signal X of T has even symmetry, or it is called even, if and only if X of T is equal to X of minus T for all values of T. We can have similar definition for discrete time sequences, X of N, for example. Some examples of signals and sequences with even symmetry are shown here. XFT has odd symmetry, or it is odd if and only if XFT is equal to minus X of minus T for all values of T. Similarly for discrete time sequences, as shown here with these two examples. Note that the point of symmetry doesn't have to be at zero. It could be non-zero, as you see in these examples. The property of symmetry is defined also for finite duration signals and sequences. They could be symmetric across the center point of the region of support. Here are a few examples. A signal is said to be periodic if there exists a value t such that x of t is equal to x of t minus t. The smallest such value is called the period of the signal. Similarly for discrete time sequences. Here, the period is denoted by n. It is clear that for a signal or a sequence to be periodic, it must be of infinite duration. Another category of signals is defined based on their strength. A signal is said to be bounded if the amplitude of the signal is finite. Otherwise, we call it unbounded. Other measures of signals strength could also be used to categorize signals. Energy signals are signals whose energy is finite. Or the signal's power, which is the time average of the energy, basically, that could be also used as the measure of strength. This is used usually for periodic signals. Signals with finite power are called power signals. The energy of a continuous time signal, X of t, is defined as expressed here. Similarly, we have the definition for discrete time sequences. Based on this definition, we can say that all bounded and finite duration signals or sequences have finite energy. They are energy signals. And if a signal is of infinite length, then it may or may not have finite energy. It is also clear that if a signal is periodic, then it will have infinite energy. Let's look at an example where we have X of T as defined here, and we want to calculate its energy. Using the Wolfram language, we can define the signal as piecewise and plot the signal 
the piecewise continuous time signal has odd symmetry, as you can see. It is bounded and of finite duration, so we know that the energy will be finite. To calculate the energy using the definition, we replace x of t with its value over the two intervals, and we get the two integrals shown here. Simplifying and evaluating the expression, we get 2 for the energy. Also using the Wolfram language, we can take the integral and get the same value. As another example, consider the discrete time signal defined here. And again, let's calculate the energy of the signal. Here, the sequence is defined to be 0 for negative values of n. Starting with the definition of the energy, this time we have a summation. It's taken over values of n from 0 to infinity. Evaluating this sum, we have 9 over 8. We could also try using the Wolfram language. Let's first define the sequence x of n. Now taking the sum, we have the same result. The average power of a continuous time signal x of t is defined as shown here, similarly for x of n. For periodic signals or sequences, the average power is measured over one period, t or n. Note that all bounded and finite duration signals or sequences have an average power of zero. The integral will be finite divided by t, where t is going to infinity, we get zero. Let's find the average power of the signal x of t as defined here. Starting with the definition, we replace the value of x of t. The integration is taken from zero to capital T. Simplifying, we get 1 over 2. Similarly, using the Wolfram language, we can define x of t first. Computing the average power, we get the same value. For the discrete time signal shown here, the average power can be computed by taking the summation over a period of the signal. The period is 10. We replace x of n with 1. The average power will be 1. Also computing the value using the Wolfram language, we get the same value. In this lesson, we presented some important properties of signals and classified signals into different categories based on these properties. Continuity, duration, symmetry, periodicity, and the strength of the signal. We studied methods for calculating the energy and average power of signals, and we went over several examples.